Um, if it gets to the point, if, if it, at the end of that process, it goes to the HDRC, and so there's an opportunity for public input into the demolition. In order to demolish a house or any structure in a local historic district, you have to prove either economic hardship from being, from keeping the, the structure or a loss of historic significance. So, you know, say there was a a massive fire, and so whatever was historic about it is no longer there. That could be a loss of significance. So there are two those two criteria outlined in the UDC for demolition. Um, what happens if someone did I haven't gotten to that. So, so that's an historic district. Any questions about that? Just about that. No, you have yeah. to notify the neighbors about yes. that. Why do we have to do that in conservation? So on the conservation district side, um, there historically, as it's currently written, demolition was not one of the things that was restricted in a neighborhood conservation district. However, um, we know that people who have become neighborhood conservation districts have concerns about how their neighborhoods are developing. And so we have instituted a requirement to um, at least look at every demolition that's proposed in an NCD and notify the neighborhood association and the council office so that then you know they can communicate with others as, as deemed appropriate. And and then, but ultimately, we don't ha we don't have grounds to not approve a demolition permit at the end of that review period unless it becomes historic. And by the way, we want to say we just filed an ordinance request that 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 does help with NCDs in that similar process. So that is going to be something that we'll be going through with staff to help to address that very process. We want we want to we want to see. And of course, we're going to have to go through legal and find out what can we do to apply these same rules to NCDs. But that's that's in process. No, not, not exactly. We, we just we, we just filed it and we're, and we're, we're in the process of, of reviewing that and we hope that we can get those same protections. What's the turnaround time on that kind of decision being? On what decision? I'm sorry. What's the time on this? About a 90 day process. Oh, okay. Um, yes. Okay, my name's Gary Lockie, and I'm, I'm sorry. How does he look a lot? I don't live in the neighborhood. I came here to learn about historic designation, etc., and maybe <coughs> to add a little bit because I was the chairperson of the NCD in Beacon Hill in 2005. I had five public meetings like this with the city sitting behind me, so I, I know what y'all are going through because it's basically the same, it looks like, with historic. One thing, a couple of things I wanted to say, because I need to leave, sorry. Um, on this that the city has put out, where it says, well, how is NCD different? The first paragraph is basically wrong, because it says that uh, if proposed modifications or new construction does not apply with the UDC, the permit is denied. That should say NCD. NCD overlays all of the all of the guidelines, uh, not guidelines, all of the laws that are written in the NCD. Um, the, the NCD is part of the UDC. So the NCD overlays the UDC and overrides the UDC it is part as, of a, UDC. as a law. It, so it is part of the UDC. The NCD overlays and is over the UDC and it's a law that supersedes and overrides the UDC. We have a slight disagreement. Well, it, it's, not, it's not a disagreement, it's, it's the law. That's that's just the way it goes, and this is why. This is one reason why NCD is you, you've got to fight all, the whole time. So to address this uh, Michigan guy right here about historic San Antonio, by Mark Twain said Mark Twain said that San Antonio was one of the four unique cities in the United States, and this is San Antonio right here. This is San Antonio inside of 410. The, the, I, I, you know, if, I, excuse me if anyone is, uh, lives out in the suburbs, but once you get out in the suburbs, it's basically anywhere in the USA. So if we don't protect this downtown area, we don't become San Antonio anymore, we become anywhere in USA. And I respect that. No, I respect that. I appreciate that. One more thing. I, I believe there is 
some urgency here because of the SA Tomorrow plan and because of the the corridors that run up from Fredericksburg and, and Broadway because those have a wide swath that, that it encompasses. The downtown and the midtown section of, of the SA Tomorrow is getting ready I, I don't know if you can uh, agree, but it's getting ready to have a lot of zoning things happening. And as those things happen, we're the closest to that, and we're already seeing it in our neighborhood, and the 930 West Craig was brought up, and we won't, we won't go there. Come on. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's all the we that the, the, MCD, the MCD took, I'd say, six to eight months to write, to write it. And then and how long till it was approved? Where is that included? Um, that's probably included. So, you know, it was within a year, but it was almost a, a full year to get the MCD. I kind of give people an option and say they're historical because the MCD is, is worthless, right? Is what I'm hearing. Um, you know, I'm saying, the NCD, really you, the NCD that does nothing if they approve that, right? I mean, so one thing, the NCD, you got to police yourself. And and it's a lot, even though it's laws, it still is interpretations. And when, when the city works with developers, their job, the DSD, if you look at their card, it says, what can we build for you today? So they're going to work with whoever goes down there and the neighborhood usually isn't notified when they're just working together. How can I get around? How can I work with this NCD to get my plans made? So that's kind of how the, NC, the NCD works. That's even, though, <laughs> even though the NCD is a law, we, we just had a variance the other day in front of the Board of Adjustments, and I brought it up to the Board of Adjustments, and not a single person on the Board of Adjustments knew that NCD was law an ordinance, which that's where you go to get your variances. Now, now to, to um, Mr. Trevino's uh, credit, he is trying to work to get the Board of Adjustments trained in, in doing it, because they're basically citizens okay. that are down there. Let me, let me address one real quick, one, one real quick thing. Uh, about the urgency, uh, you did mention some zoning coming in because the essay tomorrow. I just want to clarify, we're not going to do any zoning immediately. There's going to be some plan amendments. You know, those are going to take place first. Uh, so we have a little bit of ways before we get down to the zoning process. So uh, we don't have to do anything today, tomorrow. We have a little bit of time. I'm sorry, what did you say, Tom? Overlays that are in place already. We do have overlays. Yes, don't they prevent and all the airport districts, etc. Doesn't that already prevent um, o overlays? It, it just depends on what the overlay is. No. Overlays are, are very different. I mean, we, we have an overlay to protect the recharge zone. So in that case, certain uses are not allowed over the recharge zone. So that that's one. And it, you're right. We have an airport overlay, so we're, we're regulating the height of buildings. So overlays are very specific. You know, to what they're trying to protect. Okay, this one has been waiting for a long time. Yes. You mentioned uh, I think you referenced Monticello Park and how they happened in phases, possibly flooded them. So it, it seems like there's a lot of back and forth. Some reports went on. Some properties were were not cut out to reach the 51 percent. So that 51 percent, why can't you just make them historical and those who are opposed leave them alone, leave them out of it, and make make them a second phase or a third phase, so that we can stop all the bickering and the back and forth and those who want it. Let them have it. Those that don't, you look at your maps, and I don't remember who called me, but I was told on the phone um, that Valentino Street was going to be cut out because they couldn't get the 51%. So that's what I would like to add to that. So, um, so I guess if, if we can jigsaw a street, then we can certainly as you, said, as, as you said earlier, you know, whatever, whatever historical district started with two blocks, three blocks. Okay, well then those who don't want it, let's just cut them out. Okay, okay so I mean, individual properties are called landmarks, not districts. So it, it, that is a different thing. So the reason that people often become interested in considering historic district designation is because it protects the overall character of a, of a block or two blocks or three blocks or whatever it is. 
And so to, to, to spot zone, essentially, by handpicking based on owner consent is just, is just not consistent with that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Tell me that's what you got. Uh, how does that show that that's what's going on? Because the forest workers are about the keystone that were built in 1897 for the workers from Stone Quarry, which is now Second Gardens, were paddled by bus or whatever carriage every day from the Stone Quarry to the four houses that were built in 1897 that are on Valentino. However, they were gerrymandered out in a house built in 2006 on Mistletoe is included in the historic district. I don't oh, yeah. think that a lot of people here are really anti-historic necessarily but the process is going to work it seems to me it should work in a fair way an open way that you know if there's a problem with the gerrymandering rule so, so here's here's my here here's my advice so if when the when the historic district is heard at the zoning commission if you have a proposal for a, a different boundary that would be a great time to to make that request of the zoning commission that is something that can happen through the process. You can say to Councilman Trevino when it reaches council, you know, we really think that these properties over here are not in support. We think you should consider this boundary. And it is it is the prerogative of council to consider a reduced boundary. Okay, so I'm sorry, just to follow up question that. So um, I know for myself, I'm on a very small street and there's only three of us and none of us want it at all. Which and so it's being towards. We're, we're all business owners. We don't want this neighborhood. Um, and so um, you're saying we can ask to be cut out. Is, is that right? Absolutely. You can okay. make that request. Okay. Just turn the governor and go to 7 Eleven. He's supposed to tell it. Because I want you guys to do what you want, but I don't want it. <laughs> you know? no, I, 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 I want to be very clear. Okay, the, so that right there is part of the problem. It's not what we want. Okay. Well, there was, of there was 17 yeah. people at the first meeting to discuss this whole process to begin with. There were multiple, multiple public meetings where the entire neighborhood was invited to come. It is not a single individual's decision. It is not my decision. It's not your decision. It's not her decision. It's not his decision. This was a decision that was put forth in front of a group of people who went to the city and said, we would like to examine this to see if this would work. Well, what okay. prompted it was the teardown, so, right? And like, what's going up across the street? Which is exceedingly common. Which is exceedingly common in this situation, right? Here's a teardown or something like that happens. Okay. Right, we'd really like to speak to this. The reason that we cannot say, we want this property to be historic and this one not, and this one to be, and this one not. If we look at this map, this large property right here is on R4. It's vacant. It's owned by Terramark. There's representatives here from Terramark. It's across the street from their house. Right? It is across the street from their house. Which is what but right here is Mr. Audience's property. And right here is Marilyn's property. If they want a historic and Terramark opts out, Terramark can build whatever their zoning allows for. So that can However, hot. You can challenge and that current their no. zoning is in place. We cannot challenge it. They have the right to build on their lot within the current zoning. The current zoning allows a three-story building. These two homes are one-story historic homes. If there, if this lot opts out and that is allowed, these homes are stuck with three-story homes staring into their backyards and their windows. And that is why you cannot pick and choose houses down the block. That is why you need well, a contiguous area. And it is a contiguous area. So, so let me, let me explain it. We can't plot zoning to change. She's, property she's correct. Has the right to change their stuff to apply to other zoning or not. But, but we cannot force someone else to change their zoning. You have to use the higher I'm speaking completely. Excuse me. Excuse me. I've had enough. Thank you. You have a high density zoning on your property because you use a multifamily. If the neighbors said, oh, we don't want any multifamily, we want to rezone R6, don't tell that me. can't happen because it's your property. Yeah, so it's just the same. Terramark owns their property. We can't say, Terramark, we don't want you to build what you will. We're so taking your money away. away. They, they have this zoning. It exists. Well, and this is why we're they're right. So, I mean, what do we do to keep that from happening? Try we can do nothing but historic. And they have, they, they, I'm assuming, Mr. Turner, that you are oh, yeah, in opposition of the designation, and that's their rights. Ah, don't ask me. 
Well, given what happened the week in hell, I can see why you would feel that way. Because somebody let that experience ride, and they ended up with a modern... Something that's going to look terrible probably. So, so it's okay. 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 There is a question about base. There's there's two different types of zoning. There's your base zoning, and then there's there's overlay zoning. Your base zoning. So if you have a base zoning for single family, all you can do is single family. You can have a historic single family district, right? You can also have multifamily, and then we can put a historic overlay on that. So you can have a historic multifamily district. So you can still have apartments in historic districts. That's dictated by the base building. Just wanted to but, clarify but that. The, but the design is, it has to go through the review process. Review. And the public gets to hear about it. Exactly. Um, to the meeting can say, I like it, I like it. Correct. You get to There's an opportunity for public input. Correct. Um, there was a hand over here. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I've been here for about my house 13 years ago. And it was for sale for $35,000. I thought I could buy a car or I could buy a house. So I offered 60 and they accepted it. I put every dollar I had, which was $60,000, so I played the symphony. My house got broken into twice. And um, I was staring in front of a crack house. We didn't have a meeting. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. My house got broken into. Nobody wrote me a letter. They didn't want it to go. Uh, historic then. I don't know how many drug deals, you know, cocaine, crack was going on across the street from me. We didn't have these meetings then. Nobody cared. Do you understand? And then a little thing happened. Great Mr. Castro, 20... 2020, we're going to change downtown. And everyone's like, dude, are you nuts? There's nothing going on downtown. And then all of a sudden, the Pearl got built. Now, I know what it's like to lose my job. And I want to publicly thank David for changing my legacy. And everyone here, whether or not you vote for this or not, this man gave at least $150,000 to you. You should be thankful. People that have, let me tell you something. When I came here 13 years ago, I was afraid to put granite in my house. You know why? Because nobody was doing anything. And I'm telling you, if anybody wants to, there was a house up the street, that monster, that orange thing, that was for sale for over 400 days at $350,000. So for you people, I respect you and I love you, but I want you to understand that our destiny has been changed by people that have come into this neighborhood and made huge financial changes to all of us, whether or not this goes to story or not. We're arguing over something, the pearl came and it changed everything. So I want to first Acknowledge David. I want to thank him for my baby's baby because we're going to be able to afford to not have, I will have to live off of Social Security like my mother did it, $1,200 a week. This is an incredible area. This whole area of the Oreo cookie is now the White Gucci Center, almost part, and, and the Pearl. Let these people develop, build. It'll go into the millions. No, I think that's not appropriate. Is it a neighborhood conservation district? Is it a compromise? Or am I just hearing that it's. I hear a little things like it's a horrible idea. And then I hear it's a compromise. It's a compromise. It's a story, but it's like executed properly, right? Like if it's like if it's in a place that are following, is that a fair assessment or no? Let me try it. It, it can be a compromise. It, it is not a historic district. It is a step in a way towards a historic district, but it does not come with all of the protections that a historic district comes from, and it doesn't come with all the responsibilities that a historic district comes from. So, can you write it to where it gives a little more protection you, you, than Yes, you can. You, you can write it to, to add some protections, but it'll so never, it'll never be, it will never be a historic district. 
It's a distinct district. Um, well, unless unless we go through the process and designate the shore. Can I actually speak to that? Um, there's been some discussion on, online. I don't know if anybody here is a part of the Next Door app uh, for our neighborhood. But there's been some discussion online about this because 233 West Craig has come up. It's a vacant house. It was partially burned. It's a realtor's investment dream, right? Um, yeah, this is the type of place that you're looking for because it's one of those big, beautiful, old houses. And it's been purchased okay. by a developer. Um, it's been purchased by a developer. And Tammy Cayley from Alta Vista uh, has, has put on here, um, and Denise Stalka from Westport. Westport's looking at the historic. Our councilman told us without it, he would support the owners who want to demolish. We lost a grand old corner home that is now becoming four McMansions. It angers me. They told us to do a neighborhood plan. Committed neighbors spent hours and hours and developed a good plan. The city told us that won't get it done. Get NCD status. We did. They said still not enough. Must be historic. It remains to be seen if historic really will protect us or if it's just another smoke stream. Further down on that, further down on that, Temi Cagley from Alta Vista said, Denise, is Westport an NCD? Over here in Alta Vista, we're about to start updating our NCD, which is very updated since we faced challenges that didn't exist when it was established 15 years ago. Well-meaning, but the language leaves leeway big enough to drive an 18-wheeler through. And the developers abuse this. Okay? So when we're talking about an NCD versus a historic, you're talking about a public process and public input versus a thing that somebody puts together at some point, right? And if nobody pays attention to it or updates it or maintains it, or if you don't spend right on once putting it together, right? Then nothing happens and the developers continue to do what they want to do without input from us. So why does the city allow that though? Why, it's almost like the owner has a choice that they're going to store or kind of gets rid of the development side. Yeah. So, so why is there not more um, rules on the NCD and the historic side? We're, we're looking to strengthen the rules of the NCD. We want, we want to provide. So a lot of what what is it, what occurs, unfortunately, and I, and I and I have to agree. I mean, that there's there's been cases where because something happens, we, we get noti we all get notified after after the fact. But we have in place now a notification that is at the beginning of the planning process. This allows the neighborhood associations, the neighbors, the council office, staff to begin a more meaningful discussion. So we are trying to strengthen those those those, those specific uh, outlines that we think could be helpful and potentially be a compromise, but yes, there, well, there are... a choice, because right now we only have, we don't have a choice, really. That doesn't work, and so we're only faced with historic or nothing. No, so what I'm saying is that, that they're, 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 okay, I understand. What we want to do is we want to, we want to educate you, we want to, and we also want to learn. What can we do? You know, we, we as a council office and, and the community together, we want to either help strengthen current NCDs or help those people who feel like NCDs are not enough go historic. This this is this is important. Not everybody wants to go historic. Some people want to stay NCDs. But we are hearing that there are there are loopholes, and sometimes we get caught, uh, you know, sort of behind the eight ball, saying, "Wait, we wish we would have known about this." And if there's a way, and we 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 started that, we we have a process in place that helps to begin that because we we believe when we can start the communication early that is very very helpful and then I, I that, that that has helped uh, this particular office on, on many many cases I think I had a there was a raised hand over here but yes Councilman, um, that sounds very reactive I'm 930 West Craig which has an NCD is currently under construction this happened recently they're still building these three-story condos that, that picture, please hold that picture up again. That picture is three stories. Those are huge stories. That is a two-story building on the on the left of it. Do you see? The, the left building is a two-story building, and that is three stories, and it's currently under construction. It's so reactive to say, oh, now we're trying to fix it because this happened to slip through. How did it slip through? They right. spent months working on this. They trusted the city. That's a, and, and so that that is a great point. It's not reactive because we didn't know about it. So. Wait, how did they have to come to you? No, they have no. To, they had to apply for permits. They had to apply for variance. That's just it. We want them to come to us. No, it, it, that's, that's, 
<laughs> let me let me answer that. Jess. I'm trying to answer that. Not true. Again, when and and, and, I, and I'll have uh, Rod and Steph explain to you as well. What we want, we do want to have more of that conversation. And of course, as you know, there's th this is the kind of thing that we feel why we're here tonight to have more communication. The reality is that, that, that there's things that we don't see every little thing that happens. It's first, especially when somebody pulls permits. The, the, our, our office does not review every single permit. We don't do that. But what I have asked us to do, I, I'm getting to it. Let me, let me ask you. You're being dishonest. You're, you're not telling the truth. We went to your office multiple times before the ground was broken, and we listed at, at one point at almost a dozen violations of our NCD. Eventually, we narrowed it down to there's an absolute violation of four of our NCD uh, um, requirements. The only reason, in my opinion, that you guys are considering historic is you, Mr. Sanchez, have broken the NCD system. You didn't follow the rules. And that's why 730 Gray uh, is the poster child for what everyone is discussing. Thanks. Well, okay. Not true. Uh, again, once again, this is why we're working with city departments, development services, to provide that very thing. I think it's easy to say that, but the reality is we want to provide notification. We're moving to a more automated uh, service so that when something comes to a plan review, we will get there. Right? Can we get back to the discussion and the question? I, I do want to answer this. We're going to answer this later. Well, I have, I have one of the As I mentioned, uh, the is not a historic district. It, it lists the design guidelines, uh, which we have to follow. And, and obviously, we disagree on, on what those design guidelines are. Well, let's get read English. It would prohibit it. And if you twist the words, you can maybe, I don't understand how you can do it. That's not what we want to do. If we read it. In NCD, there's no way you can assign that. We, we read it and then we apply what we what we believe it says. Uh, we, we are, we're, we're doing our job. What we're doing now is we're, we're looking at the NCD. Are you working for the neighborhoods or are you working for these developers coming into the neighborhoods? Because it feels we're, like you're helping them get through these our, 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 our job is, is to look at the law and look at the project and see if it complies. Play, play it simple. And if we believe it complies, we, we have no choice. That? We have no choice. How did that happen? The okay, so we believe it complies. So let me go ahead and speak to that. So my let me go ahead and speak. So my name is Catherine Hernandez. I'm the manager over the zoning section, and my section does the plan review. Uh, for permits that are applied for in the neighborhood conservation districts. So let me speak specifically to 930 West Craig. 930 West Craig is owned multifamily, MF33. So if someone wants to build multiple units, they can. It's, a, it's called an apartment complex. In this case, it's a condominium. A condominium is a form of ownership. It's, uh, it's six units built on one lot, so it's multifamily. Beacon Hills NCD standards say specifically related to height that multifamily is allowed three stories in height. But the so it three meets, and a half. No, it is not. It's three stories. It so is. and there's a definition in the Beacon Hill NCD that defines what a story is, and it follows that. It meets the NCD criteria. The problem is, is that it is multifamily zoned property in the middle of a block. The block, the rest of the block is zoned single family. That's where inherently the problem starts. It starts with the base zoning. And there are several pockets of other multifamily zone lots in Beacon Hill as well as Alta Vista that have the same issues. And so because there are these holes in the NCD, or if I should say, it, it doesn't require that the structures be tied together, that they be together, as in like they be attached. It doesn't require it to be attached, therefore they can separate it. And, and that's why they're allowed three stories on that lot. Does that have been allowed in the I We can only enforce the rules, just like if you were to come in and pull a permit, and you wanted to pull a permit to put 
vinyl windows. And the NCD says, well, yes, you can allow vinyl windows. And if my, my preference is vinyl windows are horrible, you should put wood windows. I can't deny you that because the NCD or the code allows you to do it. So we can't, we can't insert our own interpretation or our own personal opinion onto a, onto a permit. So has we have to, to enforce the code. We have to enforce the code. Yes, so would that have been allowed in a historic district? Could yeah. not have happened in that three-story so, because they have the zoning? Could that happen in a historic district? So here's, here's this underscores the, the, the big difference between the two. And both both Rod and Kat pointed out the fact that if if an application is submitted for a permit in an NCD that meets the letter of the law, staff does not have the discretion to deny that application. They must approve the application. In a historic district, part of the review is that it has to be assessed as it relates to historic guidelines that are in place and the Secretary of Interior standards and the overall character of the neighborhood, and there is discretion. The commission has discretion and looks at properties to determine whether or not the character is consistent with the overall character of the neighborhood. Again, we're faced with no choice, though. You either go to historic or you have an NCD which has no teeth. So, is there an option to create an NCD that has some teeth where you can actually put regulations so they don't ruin the place? This doesn't happen. And secondly, if that was the case, if there was an NCD that actually had some teeth that would protect our streets from something like that happening, like it did on 930 West Bay, would you still all be in favor of historic? Zone or historic district. Historic yes. offers yes. a public yes. process. But so if there was more regulation on the end, I understand that. But my point is, I'm trying to let you know, do you see the situation? We so we're facing no choice. We're going to come to a neighborhood that's a three story multifamily, or I have to go historic and get told what to do on my own. Let me answer the question. There are a couple of different ways that you could respond to the question we're asking. One is to um, to go back to what Kat pointed out about underlying zoning. If you have concerns about about what can be developed on a property based on the underlying zoning, then you can also work with your council office and the development services department to amend the underlying zoning so that it reflects what you want your neighborhood to 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 have to allow. But there, are, you know, I mean, obviously property rights play in, and it is it is harder to change the zoning if a property owner isn't in favor. It's not impossible, but it is harder, and so that you know, it's not a done deal. On the side, on your question about can you make the NCD stronger? Yes, I mean, as the councilman has articulated and Rod has said, um, staff can and the council ultimately can look at those regulations and potentially could strengthen them. But there is always going to be a difference. It is never going to get to the point where you have an NCD minus the public process, and so you can just come down. It's never going to be as much protection as a historic district. And that's not, that's not just the city of San Antonio making that decision. Historic districts are enabled by state law. They're envisioned by the state legislature. And, and so the state legislature grants us the ability to place limitations on properties that are designated historic. Those same abilities don't exist for NCDs at the same level, um, and so there are limitations on what you can regulate at the NCD level. I have a good question about many residents on the, <coughs> the eastern side of um, of Mistletoe coming from McCullough. Most of the houses are fixed up, but passing my property and my husband's property, suddenly all the houses become much smaller houses. Several of them have been restored. Um, several of these two gentlemen who raise the value of the property, done um, consistent renovations. They, they don't clash with the neighborhood or anything like that. Right, right. Yeah, and so um, I, I'm a little bit confused as to why we, you know, we have to have historic as though we're had, made to fear that all this you know, development's going to come. And next thing you know, they're going to be tearing down your next door neighbor's house. Then they're going to build two stories, too. Well, I mean, it's not that going to happen. You know, it, it may or may not happen, but it's a possibility. And that's often the conversation. What's that? Oh, I live right next door where they demolish, to where Terramark wants to put whatever they want to put. I get it.
developers are going to buy it. We're going to have people like Dave to maintain the integrity. And they don't need to be able to do it. They don't need to be able to do it. They don't need to be able to do it. They don't need to be able to do it. They don't need to be able to do it. They don't need to be able to do it. I just lost my train of thought when I was speaking there, but I was headed for was that that here has many elderly people who live in those homes, maybe 50, 60 years. Yeah. Many of their homes are decrepit, albeit this door would be my house. But something you said, the burden is only the burden's gonna fall you know, harder on those elderly without money. Within old homes, that should be restored. Well, um, let me let me address that one one aspect of that. I mean, we we do um, we do offer a number of uh, of opportunities for um, public education and outreach, and also assistance. Um, we have, our office administers a program called STAR, which stands for Students Together Achieving Revitalization. Um, we've worked on over a hundred houses in our local historic districts where property owners need assistance to maintain them. Um, so that is a resource that is potentially available to owners that are in need of assistance. Um, we also have other similar projects where um, we work on houses um, to help property owners through that process. So that is that is an option that is available in um, in local historic districts through our office. So at this point, if it, if we you know historic is that going to stop Terramark from what they're doing or is there they're already approved right um, so there whatever proposal they would submit for HDRC review um, and so it would, it would have to go through the process and um, they would have to comply with the historic design guidelines which address things like um, character consistency and scale and setback and are they not going to have a case by uh, Before all this came up, so now we don't want this property. Or now we can't. We're not going to achieve our return on this property. It's not. They can sell it. It would be free to sell it if they no longer wanted to develop. We develop all around downtown, and we take great pride in, in the product that we do. We spend a lot of time with the neighborhood, of which most of which have been very receptive to what we do. We try to fit with. The plan that we presented to the neighborhood was a plan that would, I would say, have a 99% chance of being approved through a historical district. We did all the right scale, we did the right height, we did the right window treatment. Not the number, not the number of units, though. That's just totally right. But it's been compromised on the number of units. They won't have a six. So, hold on, hold on, this doesn't speak to that. Yeah, and, and just, to, just to be clear, like, I, I have not seen the proposal, so I cannot comment on whether or not what they what they were planning to do with how it would be received. Um, whether or not it goes historic, there's a certain amount of density that is that is allowed by the base zoning. So often the arguments, I mean, I've heard the, the term three-story thrown around quite a bit. That is allowed in some of these pieces of property, whether or not it has historic. So the aesthetics are, are the thing that's going to be well. Scale scale is is determined by the historic designation. The number of units is yes. not. Could it, I mean? The multifamily would still be allowed based on the base zoning, but the scale of the construction, that's why it's design review. It doesn't change use, but the scale and the setback and the overall character would have to be consistent well, with the neighborhood. Feet? What are you talking about? It's it, it depends on it depends on the property. Right? Yeah. For for Charlie Turner's particular property on four is three stories, it's thirty five feet max. As it's currently zoned, right? The base zone is three stories, 35 feet max in height. Sure, do you live in our neighborhood? No, but I do live in the neighborhood. But you can come in and build your your building on that twenty miles down the road. Their building is so great that you claim. Why haven't you moved this one in our neighborhood? I have moved into Westport. I am now dealing with the MCD for my own personal home. And, uh, and, and, and I'll tell you, what I've listened to here isn't what I went through personally. As far as getting the permit to demolish a house that was in such disrepair, I would love to have saved it, but it was impossible. So I went through the process, and it took me 90 days or so to go through the demolition process. That building was not in despair. 
questions here and you know we're we're happy to answer your questions if there's any new questions that you'd like for us to address hold on rest your arms you, oh, let me talk just a second um, ultimately it's clear that you all need to have some conversation among yourselves have some discussions talk to each other we're happy to come out again in the future don't feel like this is your only opportunity you can reach out to any of us with questions um, we can host additional meetings um, Are we expected to have 100% consensus before we can move forward with the process? Is that the expectation now from the, from what we're doing here that we have to have a 100% consensus? I, I don't. I, I don't point? think 100% is even possible. <laughs> Um, so, so no, I don't. I don't think anyone anticipates that there'll be a hundred percent in either direction. Um, it was just. I mean, I think the the desire was just. There's no. There's no hurry necessarily either. So the desire is to is to make sure that people have the opportunity to have their questions answered. Just to clarify, the historical the historic district designation will not dictate or determine the amount of units that go on a property only in aesthetics. Is that correct or incorrect? Correct. It doesn't. It doesn't change the underlying. Well, this use. is all not going to accomplish what you want. No, because we're applying for six. There's a difference. I do have. I have two questions. <laughs> One, Mr. Kerry, appreciate how fortunate you've been. If you were to subdivide your property, can you then build two multifamily units? Uh, maybe the commissioner should answer that question. If they if they divided their lot, is it then R and four for both lots? Yes, it is. So the R and four carries with the property. So if it's sub subdivided into two, R and four is for both lots, and R and four allows up to four units if it meets four thousand square feet. So it's four and four. Each lot has R and four. It has to meet the setbacks for R and four. So it's got to meet the side, front, and rear setbacks. As long as you can do that, you can build your structure. Is it your intention to divide the lot? Yes. We actually own two lots. Well, Just to so you know, we have two lots. We have, we have one property instead of two lots. Right. So we already had two lots. Yeah. Right. So that's really from the very beginning we were planning on. And you'll have so it could be four and four. Exactly. But you're not what doing that. Okay. But you're not doing that. We're doing that. So what he's saying is that the way the way it's configured today is actually two lots. So right now it's already two lots. Each one has R and four on it. It's just shown, it looks as like one because Bear County Appraisal District has it as one account. And they do that for everybody's property. If you have two 25 foot width lots, you see it as one square. It represents uh, 50 feet in frontage. It's because you own both lots, it's one account. So he has two lots today. So each lot, meaning the 4,000 square foot minimum lot size requirement, gets up to four units on each lot. And whether it's historic district or not, you will be able to put that many units on. Right, because a historic overlay or an NCD overlay does not govern legal use of the property. But the historic, the historic, the historic has a way to have a scale. Yes, and the, the scale of the buildings might have and to be attached to the character. Not. That's what it addresses. That's what overlay, overlay districts address, the design of how it looks. Right. What is that? Empty property. Yes. Right. What do you have unused property? I forgot to turn it. How difficult is it under the story to get permission to build on property that's not utilized? Or I can't remember why we're Underutilized. 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 It's, it's the same process. That's what we talked about earlier. New construction goes through the commission process, and we look at setbacks, scale, character, materials, design. It doesn't mean that it can't be modern or it has to look like a fake historic house. It could look like this. Like use historic um, material. I mean, it should use historic materials, but it may have that sort of thing. Well, materials consistent with historic. Yeah, I'm sorry, I wasn't exactly. Clear, but um, so it does. So the guidelines speak to what kinds of materials should be used, how windows should be arranged, what kind of roof forms you should have, so that there's consistency in the neighborhood to maintain the overall character. It's not impossible. No, I mean, we, I, again, I mentioned this earlier, um, I really would encourage you to take a look at our website, SAPreservation.com, if you haven't. There are a lot of resources there, and whether or not you become a historic district, 
Um, our historic design guidelines are actually a really great resource for owners of older and historic properties in general. There's a lot of information about overall maintenance concerns and things like that. So I really would encourage you to take a look at that, but you can also see what types of things the HRC is looking at. I would also encourage you to review um, our economic impact study that was done by Donovan and Brickma a couple of years ago. And one of the, the reason that I thought of it is your question about how hard is it to build. Um, actually, you, you probably would be surprised at the number of permits that are issued in our local historic districts. It clearly demonstrates that districts are not frozen in time. In fact, Mr. Turner's building in, in a number of other historic districts. And so it is, it is absolutely not about stopping things from happening or freezing in time. It's about managing that change so that the overall care to the neighborhood is consistent. Can you see the air with how long that process will take in front of the vacant lot? Build on that vacant lot. How long that process is going to take? Yes, um, the application process of the HRC is actually one of the shorter of, the, of any commission. Um, the application process is 19 days from when you submit the application to when you're first heard by the commission. We do encourage people to come in earlier than that and work with staff and take advantage of the design review committee so that you can get um, input early on. Um, but the actual period time from submittal to getting to HRC is 19 days. And the time? Well, it depends on it depends on you. I mean, you have to go through the permit. You also have to go through the development permit, development yeah. services permitting process. There's a lot of questions that, that we would have to answer. Are you zoned correctly? If you're not zoned correctly, we have to go through a process for that. Is the property platted? If you're not platted, there's a process for that that can take a little bit of time. And if you have all that satisfied, you come in for a permit, residential. You can be done in, in a few weeks. Commercial. Maybe a month or so. But the code the codes that you have on the books now, how many volumes of codes do you have right now? Oh. Or just a regular or just a regular or just a regular stack on the floor? It'd be about the size. How much okay. are you going to pay for a historic district? Historic is a chapter and one of the codes. So, so I just want to thank everybody for coming. We want to be respectful of all the time that we have uh, we, we have here. Uh, I, 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 I got you. So I just want to say we're going to be wrapping up because we want we we we're very appreciative of the church uh, allowing us the time to to be here tonight. Let's go ahead and take a, a couple last questions so that we can wrap up. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So yes, you've been very patient. I'm not supposed to say the
all of the neighborhoods. It doesn't just say, oh, it's only for this one or for that one or for this one. Those guidelines are applied basically to all the all the areas. To all the historic all, Exactly. So it's not specific to that block or these houses or these three. It's, it's overall. I just want to make sure that you have to do that. Because I'm having to do that because I own a home below this street. The law says that's the only way we can proceed. I can do But again, as we said very early on at the meeting, it doesn't require anyone to do anything. So if Mr. Hunter isn't moving forward with this project yet, he doesn't have to come to the agency. I just wanted to confirm that because me as a resident, little mini me, Yes. I, I have an application in and I've gone to meet with you guys and I've done all of that. So I just wanted to make yeah. sure that yes. me as a big developer guy has to do the same thing. Same rules. That little me has same to do rules. Same rules. I'm in a, I have a different um, yeah. income level than he does, so I just want to make sure that he has to do that too. Yes. My second question is, I would like to know when, if we know when this is going to be decided, whether it's going to go historically or not. Because I am meeting and I'm doing all this, and so I kind of I've got I've got the work. My stepfather passed away. I inherited the home. It was built in 1910. It's falling down. It needs everything under the sun. I went and got a loan to rebuild the house that I lived in when I was a little girl, and I plan to live in it someday. But you know, and I'm all for the historical I, because. I don't want it to be torn down like she was saying because that's, that's, that's but not an accurate that's statement. That's it's it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. We can pretend it's not going to happen. It's happening. It's happening. It is. I mean, face it. It's, it's happening. So, what I want to know is when do we anticipate this? It will be going to that one of the so, so okay, we need, we need we do need to wrap up because this is this is we, you know, we did borrow this space. Uh, I think that this is important. Again, this is all part of the the, of the discussion. Uh, I want to. I hope that we can continue this, this discussion. It's really important that we all work together. This is a neighborhood, as was stated. Uh, there's a lot of discussion still to be had. Uh, know that that we are seeing the, that May 16th is going to zoning, but we hope to have more conversation uh, before then. Uh, we hope to have your com your, your uh, contact information. We'll do what we can to, to try to maybe clarify some some questions. We'll we'll do what we can to to stay in communication, and maybe even have hold another meeting uh, in the interim as well. We, we want we want everybody to feel good about all the information that we discussed tonight, and as we move forward, everybody can feel good about what we're trying to do. So thank you for being here tonight. We really appreciate it.